Now, it was the snowiest winter in the last 30 years. One morning, local police officer Chris was patrolling the area. Suddenly, he noticed a suspicious young lady. She was walking towards the road and carrying two heavy bags. Chris asked her what was in the bags. The lady said she had broken up with her boyfriend and packed his stuff to get rid of it. But Chris knew for sure that she was a burglar. How? She got out of the house through the window. People don't do that when leaving their own homes. Noah was an alien on a mission to investigate human behavior on vacation. He landed near a popular sand beach in Malibu. Noah put on a special human-like costume and hid in the crowd. Special Agent Sam was sent to the beach to deal with this issue. Sam arrived and questioned people at the seaside. He warned them that aliens might look like humans, but no one seems to have noticed anything suspicious. Take a look at these vacationers. Which one of them is the alien? That's right, the guy on the left has four arms. Yeah, that's a clue. Agent Sam caught the alien, but Noah changed his appearance and managed to escape. Sam noticed a weird figure jumping inside a train. The man decided to stop the train to check all the passengers. Look at the picture attentively and help Sam find the alien. The old man in the right corner is the alien. He's holding a book upside down. Vicky was working on her laptop in a coffee shop. At one point, Vicky needed to go to the bathroom. She decided it'd be safe enough to leave her stuff unattended and headed to the bathroom. But when the girl returned, she found out that her backpack and her laptop were missing. Oh, no. Vicky ran outside and saw three elderly ladies with picnic baskets sitting in the park. The girl asked them if they had seen the thief, but all three of them assured her they hadn't noticed anyone. Ms. Green said she had just joined her friends. Ms. Smith was eating her sandwich and reading a newspaper, and Ms. Jackson was taking pictures of birds. Vicky called the police because she knew for sure who the thief was. How did she figure it out? Ms. Green stole Vicky's things. The red backpack strap is hanging out of her picnic basket. Paul stayed late at the library. When he finished studying, he headed home. As he was walking down the dark hallway, he heard a voice coming from the men's locker room. Paul noticed that someone had locked the door from the outside. Paul opened it and saw Tom. The guy had no idea who had locked him in. He went to the swimming pool, but it was closed that day, so he decided to go home. Suddenly, someone turned off the lights and locked him in. Paul promised to find the culprit. The next morning, he questioned his classmates. Courtney said she had been working on her project in the classroom. Josh said, I swam in the pool for a while and then went to play basketball. Bob was with Courtney, but he left earlier to celebrate his granny's birthday with his family. Paul understood who was lying right away. What about you? It was Josh. The day before, the swimming pool was closed. Andrew is a photographer. He was walking alone in the wilderness and met a puma. The guy was very lucky and managed to escape. But he found out that his filter water bottle opened when he was running away from the animal. Now he didn't have any water left. Some time passed and Andrew got very thirsty. He had three options. The first one was to drink from a salty lake. The second, to drink cactus juice. And the third option was to get water from a muddy stream. Help Andrew uh -oh. make the right choice. The third option is the least dangerous. You can't drink water from a salt lake, it won't quench your thirst. If Andrew drank cactus juice, he would get poisoned. But his filter bottle can easily clean muddy water. It has 13 hearts but no other organs. Ooh, what's the name of this creature? It's a deck of cards.
What can you catch but never throw? A cold. A team of video bloggers headed to a famous haunted house to make a video about the mysteries hidden inside. When they arrived, they didn't see anything strange. The house didn't look creepy at all. The guys walked up to the building, but cameraman George turned around and refused to enter the house. His friends tried to convince him, but the guy insisted they should leave the area immediately. His friends ignored his warnings and entered the building. George was waiting for them in the street all night, but they never came out. Look at the picture and try to detect what was wrong with the house. Look at the ground. All footprints lead to the house, but there are no footprints leading away from the building. Ooh. I always run, but I never walk. I have a mouth, but I never talk. I have a head, but I never weep. What am I? That's right, I'm a river. Look at the picture. Can you spot a burglar? That's right, the thief is inside the house on the left, standing next to the window. One Saturday morning, two sisters, Jenny and Maya, played hide-and-seek at home. It was Jenny's turn to hide, and she decided to bring the game to the next level. So she got on her longboard, left the house, and hit the road. Maya counted to 100 and began looking for Jenny. She searched the entire house, but didn't find her sister. The teenager started to worry. She went out to the street and decided to ask the neighbors. Alice said she had been mowing the lawn all morning and hadn't seen anyone. Derek said he had been woken up by the sound of longboard wheels. Lisa said she had been on a business trip and had just returned. But Maya knew for sure that one of her neighbors was lying. Who was it? Alice lied. Take a closer look. Her lawn isn't mowed. What letter of the alphabet is also an organ in the human body? It's the letter I. Ay ay ay. A princess escaped from a dragon who kept her in a tower. She was walking along a dark underground hall with a sand floor when suddenly she saw three tunnels. A fire was blazing inside the first tunnel. Toxic acid was dripping from the ceiling in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with venomous scorpions. Five minutes later, the princess got to the surface and ran through the forest toward her kingdom. Which tunnel did she choose? The first tunnel. She put out the flames with sand. Smart princess. I can be touched, but I can't be seen. What am I? The heart is the right answer. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The sign says, fresh meat. Mike woke up in the middle of the night because he had a nightmare. He looked around and realized he was trapped in a weird house. Mike searched the place and found four doors to freedom. But the first door led to space. Behind the second door, there was a giant magnifying glass. Anyone who stepped inside would be burned by the sun in no time. The third door was hiding a pride of hungry lions. And behind the fourth door, there was an ocean swarming with sharks. Help Mike choose the right door. It's the second one. Sun rays aren't dangerous at night, and Mike can easily walk through that door. A billionaire businesswoman, Nancy, arrived at the police station. She was very upset. She said that her daughter Diana had disappeared. 
The day before, Nancy told Diana she would no longer give her money if Diana didn't go back to college. They argued because the girl didn't want to work or study. After that, Diana went out to get some fresh air and disappeared. Later that night, Diana called Nancy from an unknown number. She said, Mom, I've been kidnapped! Three guys put a black bag over my face and pushed me into their car. They want $5 million. We're driving through a desert. The men are wearing bunny costumes. The detective told Nancy not to worry. Diana staged her own kidnapping to get the money. How did he understand it? If Diana had had a black bag over her head, she wouldn't have seen the men's costumes or the desert. Doris was having a beach vacation with her friend Teresa. One morning, the young women were sunbathing near the water. Teresa went to a cafe to get some lemonade while Doris went swimming. When Doris came back, she saw that her smartphone, which she had left on her beach towel, was gone. Have you seen my phone? She asked the man sunbathing nearby. Nah, I've been sleeping all this time. At this moment, Teresa came back with a lemonade. She looked around and immediately understood where Doris's phone was. Who took it? It was the man, all right. Before the incident, the spade was lying on his left. Now it's on the right. There's also a suspicious pile of sand near the spade now. The man must have hidden the phone in the sand, hoping to dig it out later. Terry invited his friend Alice, who was studying to become a police officer, to a party. It was organized by his friend Sean. Terry was worried there could be a thief at this party. Throughout the event, Alice was watching the guests attentively. At the end of the party, she told Terry who the thief was. Have you figured it out? It's the host, Sean. At the beginning of the party, one of the guests had a watch on his wrist, and this woman had a beautiful necklace. But at the end of the party, the watch is already on Sean's wrist, and the necklace is in the flower pot. Detective Carlson was walking along the street when he heard the sound of glass shattering. He looked around and saw a large crowd gathering near the broken window of a jewelry store. The shocked owner was inside. The detective ran up to him. Has anything been stolen? The man said he hadn't understood yet, but then Carlson exclaimed, Sorry, I've got a thief to catch, and rushed away. What did he see? The store window was broken to distract everyone. People were looking away and didn't see this guy stealing a wallet from the man in a suit. At first, the wallet was in the man's pocket. Now the thief is rushing away, the wallet in his hand. The police had long suspected that Mr. Hall was a smuggler, transporting forbidden things on his yacht. That day, they knew for sure the cargo they were looking for was on his vessel. Several police officers came with a search warrant to the marina where Mr. Hall's yacht was parked. They examined every nook and cranny of the yacht, but didn't find what they were looking for. Mr. Hall was sneering while seeing them off. Suddenly, the youngest police officer exclaimed, I know where the cargo is! What did he understand? The cargo could only be underwater. Wrapped in a protective cover, it was tied to the anchor. Look at these guys carefully. One of them is not living alone. Who is it? It's the man on the right. He's got two toothbrushes. Austin, a rich businessman, brought very important documents to his office. But he had a meeting and needed to leave for several hours. Austin asked his secretary to be on the lookout for anything suspicious. His competitors could try to break into his office to look at the documents. When he came back, his secretary told Austin everything had been quiet. But when the man looked around, he realized someone had been inside his office. The secretary eventually admitted having fallen asleep while Austin was away. How did the businessman understand someone had visited his office?
the globe on his desk is now turned in the opposite direction. William, a successful businessman, was having dinner at an expensive restaurant. At one point, he went outside to make an important call. When he returned, his case with money and documents was gone. The thief could only be another customer. When the police arrived, they questioned everyone who was in the restaurant. Karen said she had been writing a new chapter of her book. Paul said he had been waiting in a line to get to the bathroom. Donna had already paid for her coffee and was putting on her coat. And Robert was having a video call with his girlfriend. It didn't take detectives long to figure out who the thief was. Do you know it? The criminal is Paul. Besides him, there were only four other visitors at the restaurant, and they were all busy. How could there be any line for the bathroom? The police got informed that one of the most wanted criminals, Carl Walker, was going to arrive in the country. According to this information, the man was going to come by plane. Unfortunately, the police knew very little about him. He was short, wearing glasses, and traveling under a false name. Detective Adams went to the airport. He detained four people who fit the description. They were Mr. Lewis, Mr. Relkaw, Mr. Taylor, and Mr. Wilson. Look at these men carefully and try to figure out who the criminal is. It's Mr. Relkaw. His last name is actually the criminal's last name, Walker, but with its letters reversed. A detective is looking for an important witness. Without them, she won't be able to solve a complicated case. The only thing she knows is that the witness is left-handed. Look at these people and help the detective choose the person she needs. It's the waitress. She's holding the tray with her right hand and serving people with her left dominant hand. Look at these princesses and try to figure out which of them is the fake one. It's the princess on the right. The tiaras of the princess on the left and the one in the middle have a reflective shine to them. You can see they are made of precious metals. But the ice princess's tiara doesn't shine. It's made of plastic. A businessman arrived at his office after a long trip. He discovered that some important documents had disappeared from his desk. He immediately called the police and a detective arrived shortly after. After interviewing all the workers, he had a list with three suspects on it. They were Emma, the accountant, Sophia, the receptionist, and James, the sales manager. But all of these people claimed they hadn't been inside the businessman's office. It didn't take the detective long to figure out who was lying. Do you have any ideas? The thief is James. Both women wear high heels in the office, but the footprints on the floor are obviously left by a pair of sneakers. An elderly lady called the police. She told them someone had sneaked into her house while she had been asleep. The intruder took away the money she kept hidden in her kitchen cupboard. The woman was sure it was one of her neighbors. The police visited all the neighbors, but each of them claimed they had spent the entire day at home. Look at their houses and try to figure out who the thief is. Rick is lying. He wasn't at home. His car was parked near the house already after the snow had built up on the driveway. Look at these people carefully. Who does this dog belong to? The dog's owner is the guy in the middle. He's the only one who isn't trying to pet the animal. Can you figure out how many watermelons there are in this picture? Five. Gloria failed her math test. Luckily, her professor was an understanding woman. She offered a deal. If the girl cracked three riddles, she'd get a good mark. Of course, Gloria agreed. The first task was to figure out the answer to the equation. Can you do the same? (laughs) 
The answer is 232. Gloria didn't need much time to solve it and got the next puzzle. The student saw several numbers made up of matches. What should be the last number? The last number should be 1. After every step, the number of joints goes down by 1. And finally, the teacher gave Gloria several pool balls. Use only three of them to make this equation true. After a couple of minutes, Gloria figured out the way to do it. Do you know what she did? The girl rotated 9 and got 6. After that, she took the balls with numbers 13, 11, and 6 and got 30. Gloria's quick wit helped her, and she passed the test. You're trapped in a room with no doors or windows. All of a sudden, the room starts filling with water. You check everywhere, but can't find any way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but it's still at least 5 minutes until their arrival. You only have 2 minutes. After that, the entire room will be flooded. Obviously, you can't hold your breath for 3 minutes. You've got 3 objects, but only one of them can save your life. What should you choose? A straw, a rope, or an empty bucket? You should opt for the bucket. Put it on your head. This will create an air pocket, and you'll be able to breathe for a couple of minutes until help arrives. You've got lost in a desert. It's already dark, but bright moonlight illuminates the surroundings. At one point, you see a tower. But an evil wizard is looking out of the window. He tells you, If you want to save your life, solve my riddle. You need to figure out the height of this tower. You look around and see nothing but several fallen tree branches. There's also a watch on your wrist and your own shadow. What can you use to figure out how high the tower is? Your shadow will help you. You can compare its length with the length of the shadow cast by the tower. Then, since you know your height, you can calculate the height of the tower. Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party. So they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef 
and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. 
but take a look at it. There's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Dustin is a widowed man living alone in his house. One day, the doorbell rang. Dustin went up to open his door, and right there, there she was, his uh -oh. wife. How's it possible? I hope you kept your eyes wide open for this one. Look, there's a photo of Dustin and his wife on the wall. His wife has a birthmark on her cheek. The woman that just appeared doesn't have it, so it must be Dustin's wife's twin sister. Dylan was grounded, and he wasn't allowed to meet even his girlfriend for a week. One evening, when Dylan's mom returned home from work, she found Dylan in his room and asked him if he'd met anyone that day. Dylan said that he'd been at home, studying all day. His mom didn't believe him. Why? Look, there's a lipstick stain on his neck. I'm pretty sure his girlfriend came over for a short visit. Another grounded teenager, Eslin, wasn't allowed to see any of her friends for two weeks after failing her history test. One night, her mother had a night shift and only returned home next afternoon. She came to check on her daughter, and she knew immediately that Eslin had a friend over for a sleepover. How did she figure it out? Examine Eslin's room carefully. Two plates, two cups, two forks. She wasn't the only one eating dinner in her room last night. And she wasn't smart enough to clean up after. Smells like two more weeks to me. Miss Virginia Dell is a rich young lady who had a beautiful and expensive jewelry collection behind a glass in her dressing room. One morning, she found that someone broke the glass and stole her jewelry. Miss Dell's cleaning lady claimed that she had cleaned the room at around 5 a.m. and the jewelry was still there. Virginia's best friend, who was staying in her house that week, said that she had never even walked in the dressing room. Virginia's cousin, who was also staying with her for the holiday, said that she'd walked in the dressing room in the morning but hadn't paid any attention to the jewelry and for sure hadn't stolen anything. Who is the liar? It's the cleaning lady. Seems like right after she broke the glass and stole the jewelry, she wiped off the pieces of glass while cleaning as well because there's no shattered glass on the floor. Okay, here's another task for you to test your observation skills. I'll show you two people and some items. 
Your task is to guess which person the item belongs to. Let's start off easy. What about this stethoscope? Well, it should definitely belong to this doctor on the right. Two more people. Any guesses who the owner of this bracelet is? The bracelet has a name engraved on it, Sophia. This girl on the left has a name tag with the same name, so it must be her bracelet. Next up, this lipstick. There are two girls who are possible owners, but what's your best guess? Who does it belong to? It must be this girl. Both of them are wearing lipstick, but this girl has the exact same shade as the lipstick itself. Earring and two girls again to choose from. Any guesses? It must be this girl. Her ears are pierced, and the other girls aren't. The next item is the hair dryer. Who do you think it belongs to? It must be this girl's dryer. She has long hair, and the other guy is bald. Okay, this one is more fun. The next one we have to place is this cute little cat. Who do you think is its owner? See that this girl's legs are a bit scratched? They give her away completely. It's her cat. One last item for you to place. This time it's a photograph of the owner in her teenage years with her parents. Who do you think it belongs to? The teen in the photo is a redhead with green eyes. There's just one redhead girl with green eyes, and here she is. It must be her photo. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. Five doors appeared. <laughs> only one of them will take you home, and you only have one chance. The right door is black. It's not next to the leftmost or the rightmost door. It's not the door in the middle either. Which door should Esme choose? There are just three black doors, and it's one of them. It's not the door next to the leftmost or the rightmost one, so the fourth door is eliminated. It's not the middle door, so it's out too. Esme should walk out the door on the left. Nico woke up in a dark dungeon without remembering what happened. She looked around and saw a metal door. Unfortunately, it was locked, and it required not just one password, but four. Aiko had only one attempt to make it right. Gladly, next to the door, there was a sign with four words, apple, bread, chair, and dress. Which word belongs here? Pay attention to the shapes of each password. Some letters are bigger than others, and each word should fit right in. So it should be bread on the top left, apple on the top right, dress on the bottom left, and chair on the bottom right. In a factory, a worker and a half make a chair and a half in one hour and a half. How many chairs does one worker make in one working day, which is six hours? If one and a half workers make one and a half chairs in one and a half hours, it means that one worker makes one chair in the same time, which is one and a half hours. So in a six-hour working day, one worker makes four chairs. It was a lazy day, but as soon as it started raining, a city's police officer got a call. Mr. Jones said that someone had just bumped into his car and drove away. The officer arrived. They found one person nearby fixing his car's tire. Mr. Jones said that it was the gentleman who had bumped into his car. The gentleman said that it couldn't be true, since he had been trying to fix his car for over an hour now. 
and was there the whole time. Who is lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain just recently started. If he'd been fixing his car the whole time, the ground underneath his car would be dry. But it's wet, which means his car broke down just recently, probably when he was driving away after the accident. A crew of pirates arrived at a deserted island in the Caribbeans at night. In the early morning, the captain went ashore to find his secret stash with all the treasures hidden in it. But when he reached it, the treasures weren't there. Someone from his crew had gone ashore earlier and stolen all of it. There were three suspects, Bill, first mate, Gil, Bosun, and Will, Cook. All of them denied stealing anything, but the captain knew who was lying. Who? There are footprints on the shore from earlier that don't belong to the captain. One is a footprint, but the other one is a hole from a stick. The robber must be Gil, the bosun, because he is the only one with a wooden leg. Let's start with training your eyes a bit. Can you find an odd one out here? Yes, that's the one! Another one for you. Look carefully, and you only have several seconds to find the imposter. That's the one! Correct! Now the game is getting a bit harder, but I know you've got it. What do you say? Here it is. Did you find it? Okay, last one of these, the hardest one. Do you see the odd one out this time? Great job! Mary is a mermaid. She lives under the sea with her mother, Marina. Mary is 19 years old and Marina is twice her age. How old would Mary be when Marina is 99? Eighty, because Mary is 19 years younger than Marina. Mary is hanging out at her favorite spot in the ocean. Both of the following facts are true. If all the goldfish sit on all the seashells, one fish per shell, one goldfish will stay without a shell. And if every two goldfish decide to share a seashell, one shell will be left without a goldfish. Can you count the correct number of seashells and goldfish? There are four goldfish and three seashells. Mary has a crush on Carl. He's a human. Can you find him among these three guys? The first guy has a mermaid tattoo on his arm, but it doesn't prove anything. The second guy is wearing a seashell necklace, but maybe he just loves jewelry. But the third guy is definitely Carl. His face and name are printed on this diving coach poster. Mary goes to a sea witch and asks her to turn her into a human. The witch says, okay, but first I gotta check if you deserve my gift. Solve my riddle. When you have 10, you have 10. When you have three, you have three. And when you have one, you have none. What is it that you have? Can you help Mary out? The correct answer is choice. Mary gets her legs and goes on a date with Carl. They're having dinner in a restaurant on the beach, but can you guess who should pay for this scooter? Mary! Only her footprints lead to the scooter, therefore, she arrived at this vehicle and Carl walked from the other side. Carl and Mary keep on walking on the shore and see these four guys playing in the sand. Suddenly, Carl freaks out and runs away. Why?
This guy is a ghost. He doesn't have a shadow. Carl invites Mary to a birthday party. He introduces her to his best friends, Bob, Elle, Otto, and Hannah. Can you guess what's so special about them? They all have palindrome names. The next day, Mary goes to a job interview. She arrives at an office building with a metal door. It's locked, but there's a note next to the combination lock. It only has four words, starfish, pearl, fire, and turtle. Can you help Mary crack this code? All things in this list can be found underwater, except for the fire. So the password is fire. At the job interview, the HR manager shows Mary four identical glasses with water and different objects inside them. He asks her to find a glass which contains the most water. Can you help her out? It seems like the water level is even in all the glasses, but what happens if we remove the objects? The glass that contains the smallest object will have the most water. So Mary should choose the second glass. Mary gets a job as a waitress in a restaurant. On her first day, one client runs away without paying the check. The manager says, no worries, I know him. He has four sisters and he's probably hiding in one of their houses. The manager is not a policeman, so he can't just break into their houses. That's why he looks through his sister's fresh Instagram posts. Can you spot who's hiding the thief? Take a closer look at the second and fourth pictures. Both selfies reveal fragments of male hands, but only this guy is wearing the same ring as the thief. Gotcha! The next day, a group of six friends celebrates their birthday in a restaurant. All except Kyle and Kitty order cherry punch. They drink it and five minutes later get sick. Mary calls doctors and they conclude that someone had poisoned the punch. She suspects Kyle and Kitty, so she asks them just one question. Why did you order other drinks? Kitty replies, I ordered tea because I'm allergic to strawberries. Even one small bite gives me a red rash. And Kyle replies, I'm not proud of it, but I'm really broke. I took coffee just because it's cheaper. Who's lying? Kitty, she said that she was allergic to strawberries, but the guests drank cherry punch. Carl invites Mary on a romantic weekend in the country. They stay in a fancy hotel and go for a walk. When they come back, they see that someone broke into the room and rummaged through their stuff. They question three suspects. Their neighbor says, Sorry, I had a skydiving class. I arrived five minutes ago. The cleaner says, I spent all day cleaning rooms on the fourth floor, so I haven't had time to clean up your room yet. And the lobby boy says, I was dealing with a tourist group from Sweden all day. We had some booking issues. Who's lying? The cleaner. This hotel is a three-story. Carl and Mary go on a boat trip and face a huge storm. They end up on a deserted island. After a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find something to eat. There are four options. Cornfield with fresh harvest, a garden with wild sweet potatoes, oranges from this tree, or berries from this bush. Can you help the guys make the safest choice? The boogeyman in the cornfield is moving, and it looks pretty unfriendly. There are sharp thorns on these berry bushes. Creepy spiders are hiding in this orange tree, so they better choose sweet potatoes. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Dicka, 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 dicka. Well, after a few seconds, you look around, and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How did you figure it out? Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. 
You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. <sighs> oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed, and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them. But you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing. Only an empty bed. Were you sleeping or was it real? You notice something. Phew. Oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you lay down. Now, it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're all uh -oh. vampires! How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming! You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great! It fits! You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. Could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck. Wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a werewolf. Uh -oh. eh, still kind of cute, though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard. Vampires are inside the castle. A werewolf is waiting outside, and zombies are approaching. You're trapped. Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues. Do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. 
the gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, It'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. Four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. Seven to ten points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight chill runs down your back.